I am Glenn Lagura from Davao del Norte State College, and it is my pleasure to present my talk entitled Don't Know How and Where to Start, Identifying a Research Gap. Do you find difficulty in conceptualizing your research, like to the point of not knowing how to start writing or even got no idea where to start? Do not worry, I can relate to and I know very well that many, if not all of us, find difficulty when it comes to research conceptualization, most specifically in identifying our research gaps, which must be discussed foremost in the background of our study. As a starting point of my talk, I want you to know that we, be it neophyte or pro-researcher, struggle in doing that. Nonetheless, the good news is, we can still find ways how to do it right. This is the primary reason of my talk this very day. To tackle tips or ways how we can best write, express, or relate our research gaps, which warrants us to pursue our research undertaking. Now, before identifying ways how to counter that said difficulty, let us define first what is a research gap. We researchers, especially in the academe, come with pressure to add new knowledge to our respective field for us to contribute to the progress of knowledge of humanity. To do this, we need to first learn to identify research gaps in the existing literature as what our research professors told us to do. According to Robinson et al. 2011, when the ability of the systematic reviewer to draw conclusion is limited, that is when a research gap arises. In other words, when you think your ability to reach a conclusion for a certain question is being limited because of an insufficient information, that something which is missing is what we coined as a research gap. Note that we occasionally refer research gaps as synonym to research problems. As for me, I do not have problem on that since personally I do not distinguish between the two terms. Given that definition, what you need to identify in a research gap are the unexplored and underexplored areas of your chosen topic that have scope for further research. So why it is important to uniquely identify a research gap? It is important because once you identify a research gap, it means that you identify a direction for potentially new and exciting research. Having said that, it means that your time, money, and effort are invested in the right study. Hence, it will give you a higher chance that the output which will be generated in your research will be getting published. Now, let me share to you some of the tips that you could consider in successfully identifying the research gap of your study based on my personal experience. The tips are as follows. Read, 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 RRL matrix collation, and chart method. Let me share first the first tip. Cliché as it is, but you need to read, read, and read. Either you like it or like it very much, there is only one way for you to identify your research gap, and that is to read existing studies, and or literature. I took this advice from Professor Davis during the time that I am writing my dissertation in ECHO. Read what is written in your field. Recognize the contributions that have come in the prior literature. 
but do not be owed by it. Question everything. And the fact that I was able to graduate on time means that such advice is effective for me. It is highly recommended that you read books and articles on the topic that you are working with. This will not only help you to understand the depth of work done by researchers in your field, but also provide an opportunity to ask questions that can lead you to a research gap. Also, in selecting journals to read, it is advisable to use only those reputable websites as your reliable source. The projected e-library sites are some of the sites that I keep on using while doing my literature review. I am pretty sure that you have free e-learning materials in your library and I encourage you to maximize its use. It will help you a lot in conducting your research works. These are the list of questions that you can consider pondering while reading relevant books and articles of your topic. What is the significance of the article to your topic? How can this article help you formulate your research questions? Does the author argument require more clarification? What issues or questions has the author not address? Is there a different perspective that I can consider? What other factors could have influenced the results? Are the methods or procedures used outdated or no longer considered valid in your field? Or is there scope for you to test the findings using more current approach? In this list of questions, it necessitates us researchers to read thoroughly thus to be a critical reader. The answers to that mentioned questions will lead you in determining the research gap that you are looking in your chosen topics. Next tip is the RRL matrix collation. After collecting all articles, books, and journals relevant to your chosen research topic, you may hope to use RRL matrix collation. This is the method that I always share with my students in organizing their review of related literature. This is a five-column matrix where in the first column, you just have to write the title of the research relevant to your chosen topic. In the second column, write the salient findings and or result generated in the research in a rephrased and paraphrased form. In the third column, emphasize the method used, which could involve the state of the unit of analysis or the participants involved in the study, as well as the research design employed. In the fourth column, cite the author. And in the last column, cite the source using APA style. In this way, you will not waste your time in retrieving those downloaded documents and it would be easier for you as a researcher to retrieve relevant information that you can make use of to incorporate in your manuscript. Another approach we can use in identifying research gap is this gold chart method. This is also often referred to as a concept matrix. So the underlying principle is to chart each source according to predetermined categories. Webster and Watson 2002 recommend establishing categories so that it adds value for the review. For instance, a category could feature types of variables examined, level of analysis, gaps in the literature, or other important theoretical issues you can think of. 
this approach has been useful to me during the time that I am writing my dissertation, which employed qualitative research design, as this will help you in incorporating your RRL to the specific section of your discussion. Now, um, just because you have identified your research gaps does not mean you are done. Remember, that is still part of the conceptualization stage and you have not yet started writing your manuscript. The real challenge starts during that time that you need to incorporate your identified research gaps in your manuscript, which can be found in Chapter 1, specifically in the background of the study section. To sum up the thought that I wanted all of you to ponder, you may refer to the diagram for the discussion. Reading RRL. Downloading relevant RRL for your readings is the first step that you need to do. It is vital that you collect topics which could bring you further understanding on the chosen topic from reputable publishing journals. Collating RRL. Arranging your RRL by collating it and by categorizing it could help you to further analyze and understand the current situation that you are into considering the topic at hand. This could help you easily proceed to the next step, which is the identification of the research gap. Identifying research gaps. List the identified research gap, which will be subject for presentation and discussion in your manuscript. Incorporating in the manuscript. Now, in incorporating the research gaps, you really need to write it specifically in your rationale. And that could bring us the idea, the importance of your research, as well as the urgency of conducting it. And last but not the least, observing coherence. Since the identification of your research gap is a product of thorough reading from the varied compiled literature review, it is your responsibility as a writer and as a researcher to observe coherence of the thought of your paragraphs to give a thorough understanding to your reader. Before ending my talk, I would like to give some recommendation in the way you write your research gap. It would be best appreciated if you express it by facts, figures, or statistical data. Say it with numbers. Clarify the uniqueness of your study as well as its urgency which motivates you to pursue such undertaking. And lastly, specify its contribution to your field. Be it known that a good researcher was once a novice writer. It just happened that they keep on improving their skill in writing, leading them to become an expert on it. If we are just going to nurture the culture of conducting research in our institution, then possibly we will be able to make use in doing it. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something from this talk. Stay safe, everyone.